God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Pace Domine, pace populo tuo, ne in eternum irascaris nobis. Cleanse us, Lord, we pray, Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray. Turn your face to us and blot out all our sin and guilt. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confronted me. In my anguish I called to the Lord. I cried to God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I love you, Lord. You, you are, are my strength. strength. The Lord has saved me. He wanted me for his own. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The mountains were shaken to their base. They reeled at his terrible anger. Smoke came forth from his nostrils and scorching fire from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by its heat. He lowered the heavens and came down, a black cloud under his feet. He came enthroned on the cherubim. He flew on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, the dark waters of the clouds his tent. A brightness shone out before him with hailstones and flashes of fire. The Lord thundered in the heavens. The Most High let his voice be heard. He shot his arrows, scattered the foe, flashed his lightnings and put them to flight. The bed of the ocean was revealed. The foundations of the world were laid bare. At the thunder of your threat, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your anger. From on high he reached down and seized me, he drew me forth from the mighty waters. He snatched me from my powerful foe, from my enemies whose strength I could not match. They assailed me in the day of my misfortune, but the Lord was my support. He brought me forth into freedom. He saved me because he loved me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has saved me. He, he wanted, wanted me for his own. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance and scatter my darkness. He rewarded me because I was just, repaid me, for my hands were clean, for I have kept the way of the Lord and have not fallen away from my God. For his judgments are all before me. I have never neglected his commands. I have always been upright before him. I have kept myself from guilt. He repaid me because I was just, and my hands were clean in his eyes. You are loving with those who love you, 
you show yourself perfect with the perfect. With the sincere you show yourself sincere, but the cunning you outdo in cunning. For you save a humble people, but humble the eyes that are proud. You, O Lord, are my lamp, my God who lightens my darkness. With you I can break through any barrier. With my God I can scale any wall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance, and scatter my darkness. Turn back to the Lord and do penance. Be renewed in heart and spirit. From the book of Exodus, the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, that over the land of Egypt there may be such intense darkness that one can feel it. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and there was dense darkness throughout the land of Egypt for three days. Men could not see one another, nor could they move from where they were for three days, but all the Israelites had light where they dwelt. Pharaoh then summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go and worship the Lord. Your little ones, too, may go with you, but your flocks and herds must remain. Moses replied, You must also grant us sacrifices and holocausts to offer up to the Lord our God. Hence, our livestock also must go with us. Not an animal must be left behind. Some of them we must sacrifice to the Lord, our God, but we ourselves shall not know which ones we must sacrifice to him until we arrive at the place itself. But the Lord made Pharaoh obstinate, and he would not let them go. Leave my presence, Pharaoh said to him, and see to it that you do not appear before me again. The day you appear before me, you shall die. Moses replied, Well said, I will never appear before you again. Then the Lord told Moses, One more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. After that, he will let you depart. In fact, he will not merely let you go, he will drive you away. Instruct your people that every man is to ask his neighbor and every woman her neighbor for silver and gold articles and for clothing. The Lord indeed made the Egyptians well disposed toward the people. Moses himself was very highly regarded by Pharaoh's servants and the people in the land of Egypt. Moses then said, Thus says the Lord, At midnight I will go forth through Egypt. Every firstborn in the land shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh on the throne to the firstborn of the slave girl at the hand mill, as well as all the firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be such loud wailing throughout the land of Egypt, such as has never been nor will ever be again. But among the Israelites and their animals, not even a dog shall growl, so that you may know how the Lord distinguishes between the Egyptians and the Israelites. All these servants of yours shall then come down to me and prostrate before me. They shall beg me, leave us, you and all your followers. Only then will I depart. With that, he left Pharaoh's presence in hot anger. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh refuses to listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. 
Thus, although Moses and Aaron performed these various wonders in Pharaoh's presence, the Lord made Pharaoh obstinate, and he would not let the Israelites leave his land. How well those who enslaved your children deserved to be deprived of light. For through your children, the imperishable light of the law was to be given to the world. On Egypt, the deep gloom of night descended, but a radiant light shone for your holy ones. For through your children, the imperishable light of the law was to be given to the world. From a demonstration by Aphrates, Bishop. Law and covenant have been entirely changed. God changed the first pact with Adam and gave a new one to Noah. He gave another to Abraham and changed this to give a new one to Moses. When the covenant with Moses was no longer observed, he gave another pact in this last age, a pact never again to be changed. He established a law for Adam that he could not eat of the tree of life. He gave to Noah the sign of the rainbow in the clouds. He then gave Abraham, chosen for his faith, the mark and seal of circumcision for his descendants. Moses was given the Passover lamb, the propitiation for the people. All these covenants were different from each other. Moreover, the circumcision that is approved by the giver of those covenants is the kind spoken of by Jeremiah, circumcise your hearts. If God's pact with Abraham was firm, so also is this covenant firm and trustworthy, nor can any other law be laid down, whether it originates outside the law or among those subject to the law. God gave Moses a law together with his prescriptions and precepts and when it was no longer kept, he made the law and its precepts of no avail. He promised a new covenant, different from the first, though the giver of both is one and the same. This is the covenant that he promised. All shall know me, from the least to the greatest. In this covenant, there is no longer any circumcision of the flesh, any seal upon the people. We know, dearly beloved, that God established different laws in different generations, which were in force as long as it pleased him. Afterward, they were made obsolete. In the words of the apostle, in former times, the kingdom of God existed in each generation under different signs. Moreover, our God is truthful and his commandments are most trustworthy. Every covenant was proved firm and trustworthy in its own time and those who have been circumcised in heart are brought to life and receive a second circumcision beside the true Jordan, the waters of baptism that bring forgiveness of sins. Jesus, son of Nun, renewed the people's circumcision with a knife of stone when he had crossed the Jordan with the Israelites. Jesus, our Savior, renews the circumcision of the heart for the nations who have believed in him and are washed by baptism circumcision by the sword of his word, sharper than a two-edged sword. Jesus, son of Nun, led the people across the Jordan into the promised land. Jesus, our Savior, has promised the land of the living to all who have crossed the true Jordan and have believed and are circumcised in heart. Blessed then are those who are circumcised in heart and have been reborn in water through the second circumcision they will receive their inheritance with Abraham, the faithful leader and father of all nations, for his faith was credited to him for righteousness. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I will put my laws in their minds. And inscribe them on their hearts, not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. I will not write my law upon tablets of stone, but upon the tablets of human hearts. And inscribe them on their hearts, not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Let us pray. Lord, look upon us and hear our prayer. By the good works you inspire, 
help us to discipline our bodies and to be renewed in spirit. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.